Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. She is a world championship medalist, Pan American medalist, Pan Pacific Championships medalist, NCAA All-American from Texas A&M, and most recently coming off, coming off hot from the ISL uh, as a member of the London Roar. We've got Sydney Pickram. Sydney, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Let's get the elephant out of the room. You're, you've been in a week in quarantine and yes. you're going on a week more. How, how are you holding up right now? Um, I'm okay. I think um, when I decided to make the move and knew I was going to do quarantine, um, it was just kind of the timing after ISL was the good time to make the move and kind of take those two weeks. That was kind of mm-hmm on my radar basically through this whole year knowing about trials is that I was going to have to take the two weeks at some point. And so, um, I definitely, I think mentally preparing for quarantine, whereas like in March and April, it was like quarantine of like, okay, what are we going to do? How long is this going to be for? So I think like two weeks quarantine knowing, okay, countdown, um, do these workouts because eventually you'll get in the water very soon makes it a lot easier this time around than in April. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> April was hard. I think. Yeah. I was like people. doing my spin workouts and I was like, what am I doing these for? When am I actually going to swim? But now I'm like, okay, get your workouts in because on December 15th, Ben is going to kick your butt. So you better <laughs> <be> in shape. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so, so you, you mentioned this move, um, which is one of the things I wanted to ask you about. You're moving from A&M to Toronto. What went into this move for you? Tell, tell me everything. Um, so I think this has kind of been on my radar for a long time. And a lot of people like have known that. So basically after 2020, my plan was to move here and go to the center and train with Ryan and Ben. And Ryan Millette has been my coach almost every summer since 2014 I think so he has known my swimming knows what I've done with Steve he actually knew me when I was a club swimmer and then going to Steve so he's always tapered me when it comes to world championships pan ams pan packs everything like that um so he moved here I think earlier this spring and I knew I wanted to swim with him and it just kind of that's what it was looking for to come into 2020 and then when quarantine happened and the Olympics are postponed Um, we kind of discussed what that meant for the move. And he said, I definitely think you should stay with Steve, keep what you're comfortable with. Um, definitely like respected my decision after the, I guess, summer season, even though there was no season (laughs) to continue to train there this fall. And, um, then kind of when things came about, we always talked about trials where I would have to take those two quarantine, two weeks of quarantine. And so Canada requires two weeks quarantine, whether you fly, whether you drive. And so I knew that that was something that I had to do before trials. And as of now, like our trials are still going in April and we are kind of just, well, let's hope we can get an exemption for athletes or we can, that will be lifted. It'll be less quarantine. Like Calgary's in a pilot program where it's only two days. But basically when things started to kind of go, I guess you would say backwards and more lockdowns are being permitted and things like that. um, I kind of knew that this wasn't going to be lifted come April. Uh, Obviously I don't actually know, but that's kind of where everything seemed to be heading. And so um, that kind of led to my decision of, okay, I need to make these two weeks and the only logical time to make these two weeks quarantine seemed to be during right after ISL kind of the holiday break and that kind of thing. And, um, unfortunately the situation for the pros at A&M just wasn't the best situation. We didn't really have a lot of pool time. Um, I didn't have the gym just using the college facilities because of the rules and secs and NCAAs, things like that. Um, 
so yeah, it just, uh, it just seemed like the right time. It's something that I've been really, really excited for. And I think out of everything, um, when I was nervous at one point to be changing my programs, I'm going to two coaches that I'm very familiar with that are very familiar with my swimming. So that kind of made things a bit more comfortable and let's face it, 2020, no one's hitting the program that they thought they were going to have. And we've all, I think ISL really proved how well people can do in adapting to different programs. And so I really just wasn't nervous about the swimming. And so as soon as ISL was done, I basically had four days packed up everything I've had in college station for almost five and a half years and packed up a U-Haul, packed up a car (laughs) and drove across country. And now I'm here, I think eight days into quarantine. (laughs) Ooh. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) There's a lot to unpack in that, uh, literally and metaphorically. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I think you, you brought up a good point just that uh, a lot of a lot of pro swimmers that are based out of college programs seem to be seems to be a lot of different situations, but also they're it seems like they're getting the, the worst end of the deal, which makes sense because, like you said, with conference rules with NCAA rules, it it's just it's hard to get a pro group uh, pool time gym time as well when you're trying to keep everything distance and play by the rules and et cetera et cetera. Um, you so you, uh, you drove I didn't realize that what where'd you stop tell me about the road trip um so basically when I was in ISL my mom and my brother were planning it all I was like I don't want to I don't want to deal with any logistics like I have to figure out those and they're like no we'll plan it like and I have my dog as well so I knew I was gonna have to make the drive and having my car here and things like that um but we stopped. The first place we stopped was Little Rock, Arkansas. That was basically one stop and then another long haul into Indy and spent a couple of nights in Indy just because I won't be able to be with my mom or my brother during the holidays. So we kind of made our like holiday, went out to a nice dinner, spent a night on the town and then went to Michigan as well because my brother's actually not a Canadian citizen. So he couldn't cross the border with me, just me and my mom. And so then he had to fly home from there and then made the last bit of the journey to Toronto, which was also probably one of the first big snow days um, that Michigan and Canada has really had this year. And so, my first time driving in ice with my car with no snow tires, Texas license plate, and everyone's like, this girl from Texas trying to drive in the snow and the ice. So yeah. <laughs> that was my welcome into Canada. Um, but yeah, no, it was a good road trip. I think I was anxious to get here just because I knew as soon as I got here, I could start the quarantine and that much quicker to actually swimming. So yeah, I mean, it was good. And I'm glad to be here, glad to be in my own space and just anxious for these next six days to go by quickly (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's good that it's only six days left and like you said at least this time you can prepare a little uh (laughs) you you know what you're getting into so you so you moved to toronto to get ready for trials and you know we just reported yesterday as we're recording this, that Canadian trials are going to look a lot different. Um, we, you know, the, the big headline was that it's timed finals and it's 20 athletes per event. Um, and I actually didn't really read much into that, cause, but I saw the headline and it's like, holy moly, that's, yeah. you know, it's pretty drastic, especially for a trials meet. Um, and you know, you guys don't have semis normally at your trials meet. So that's, I guess not as drastic as maybe if the U S went from that, but still it's a big deal. Um, what, when you, when you heard that news, what was your reaction? Um, so I kind of heard a couple of days prior that they were coming out with different protocols on Monday, which was yesterday. And so I was anxious to know exactly what they were. I didn't know until I actually read the article. And I think my perspective when reading it is, you know, I've been through trials twice before and in 2016, it's the most stressful meet you can imagine, whether no matter what country that you're talking, like talking to. Um, so I think the fact that there's only one swim is definitely really scary, I think, to a lot of swimmers. Um, but then on the other perspective, I was trying to think to last time I did a prelims semis finals meet. 
and it was 2019 Worlds. The only meets that I've done since then really have been ISL, which is time finals, the FINA champs, which is time finals, and then ISL again. And so, you know, I think we are lucky enough that a lot of us have had that kind of mentality where it's up and go and give it your best all in one shot. Um, Mm -hmm. So I am, I think, way more thankful to have that under my belt if this is how trials is going to happen. Um, as we all know, trials is not for another four, five ish months and a lot can change. Um, so I think the time final aspect is scary, but I think we've had a bit more practice in it than we would have had say if this was 2016. So I'm just trying to look at it that perspective, you know, at least with them changing trials, it didn't change the date of trials and, that was basically what I had to do at trials is that's the time that I need to get up and go fast, whether it's once, whether it's twice. And so that didn't change. So that's, I'm just kind of leaning into that comfort. And then um, 20 people per event definitely changes things. Um, You know, I think for more of my main events, I'm not as concerned as if I were to do relays. Um, So kind of going into trials I don't know if I have a 200 free time to be in a top 20 to get a chance to swim for a relay or even my hunter breaststroke. I swam it on the relay in 2019, but I couldn't tell you what an individual split is. So those things are kind of the interesting aspects of it. And I think a lot of people could be in those boats too. And so, um, trying to figure out all my dog just threw his toy down the stairs and (laughs) trying to keep playing with himself. Um, But so I think, you know, there's a lot of speculation. There's, I think since it was released yesterday, there's going to be a lot of questions, but you know, as we know, like you just have to deal with what you have and make the best of it. And so, yes, it is what it is, but I want to make it better than just that and just make the best out of the situation. So, you know, trials is trials is stressful enough, but that's a time where you want to get up and go fast, no matter in which way about one time, two times, three times. So, um, yeah, I mean, have to deal with it, but I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to already be in Toronto. That's the one thing is trials will be here. And so I'm already here. That's checked off my list. And that's like one less thing to worry about. Absolutely. That's I get, like you said, one, one thing checked off the list, <laughs> keep, keep, keep going down the list. Yes. So for, for, for team Canada, for the relays, like you said, the, the, the 800, the, the four by two, the, the four by one medley, um, where you swam breaststroke last year at worlds, 2019 worlds. Yeah. Last year. Yeah, um, I'm like, what year is it? <laughs> I don't even yeah. know how far that was. <laughs> it's, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, So do you have to log a swim at the trials meet to be considered for that relay or are there extenuating circumstances? Could you, you know, suit up at a training camp or what's how, you know, how'd you get on in 2019? Um, so I think there is a lot of discretionary calls, you know, in 2019, I never swam the hunter breast. I don't think I swam at the trials or anything like that. And so just going into that meet because it is the last day it is day eight on in the world schedule which is also the same day as the 4 a.m so i'm just like (laughs) there's eight days we might as well put them together but what other 4 a.m is like oh i'm gonna swim 100 breasts so i can't complain but um basically in the morning they or i think the day before they kind of told me that it's on the radar and then they said depending how the morning swim goes for that summer we'll see um but I was pretty sure I was going to swim it. And that was just the coach's call. Um, so that does obviously give some flexibility. I, if I were to try and read all of the accentuating circumstances and all that, I would be <laughs> so lost, so confused. I don't, it's like percentages of where your time is within this. And I was like, I, I was like, I just want to go Fina A top two. That's it. So not my job. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I don't want to know like the bare minimum requirements. I just want to do what it just swim fast. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, um, I think there would be a lot of like questioning of who you can put on relays based on who qualifies in teams and individuals. So I think it definitely could be up for discussion later on, but then again, I have no idea. So I think that's also more questions has to be asked. And then again, asking them getting answers now does not mean that's going to be the answer come April. So (laughs) 
just moral of the story, get up and swim fast in April. And that's all I'm going to focus on. <laughs> good point. Good point. Yeah. And <laughs> good call. Um, <laughs> focus there. And so, uh, yeah, on the flip side in your, you know, the individual events, you know, that you are most likely will swim at trials, you know, top 20, the two, I am four, I am two breast. Um, you know, it, like you said, you've had a lot of practice of getting up and going. And when you got that news, I don't know if you've talked to Ben or Ryan or any, any coach or anyone since the news came out yesterday, but I mean, how initially, how do you feel heading into those individuals knowing, all right, like I've done this in ISL, like you said, I've done it at champion series. I have had some experience of this time finals format. Yeah, I think it, I'm really, really thankful for that because even I think last year, not this just past season, first season of ISL, when it was essentially like the final and we had a meet at like two o'clock, I think in Vegas. And I was like, how do I, do I get up in the morning? Do I try and swim <laughs> a little bit? How much do I swim? And knowing that experience helped me so much in this ISL, just because also, again, the schedules were all over the place. Um, especially because of COVID, everyone was in different pools and just, you had to swim whenever you could swim. Um, so I'm really, really grateful to have that going into the trials it, because, you know, like I, I don't know exactly the time frame. I don't know exactly how the warm up's going to work with all of these swimmers. Like, I don't understand. I don't know exactly what the protocols are going to be, but I think I've been in so many scenarios because of ISL and the FINA series that I can prep myself better than I definitely could have two years ago. So I'm feeling good about it. You know, I think, I think I'm thinking of it the best way I can. There's no point being stressed and worried about it. Um, the only thing you can do is take what you have and make the best out of it and make it better than anyone else can. And that will prep you even better. So yeah, I think I'm definitely grateful for the experiences that I've had these past two years. Yeah. And with that, let's, let's get into the ISL. Uh, it's six week bubble. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> you met, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I've, what I've heard from everyone, right? It's like, yeah. you, te, just let's, let's get into it. Tell me about your ISL experience. Uh, I mean, I love ISL. Like I fully supported it the first time around. And then this second season, I was so jazzed to get going. Um, and I think, so at first you go into it and you're like six week bubble. Oh my God. But it, it was honestly the best preparation that any of us, I think, could have asked for, you know, I think, um, especially I was coming from a NCAA program, which unfortunately in the US and NCAAs, they haven't had the best luck with COVID scenarios. Um, and so I knew going away was going to be a safer situation for me. And so I was excited to get there and um, have that. And so um, I was really excited to get to the bubble, especially be on London Roar. It was my second season with them. Um, I was excited to be a captain with PD. Um, I, I seriously was just so excited to get going because I knew it was a better scenario training wise than anything. I had no idea how racing was going to go. I was just going in fully blinded of I only started doing doubles about two weeks prior to ISL because of how limited pool time that we had at AM. So I had absolutely no idea how I was going to race. I was like, how am I going to sit on a block? I hadn't dove off a block since January because we were swimming in a lap pool with no block. We would sometimes like try and sneak in to get like a dive, but I hadn't done a dive effort since like January. Um, and so I was like, how am I going to get off a block and dive and do six, 400 IMs within six weeks? I was like, what? Um, but yeah, I was just, it was so fun to be back with the team, um, the old London Roar people, and then as well, the newbies. And it was just so fun to be part of that team atmosphere when we've been so, I think, separated, especially from the college program. We were so separate from them because of COVID and so to be back with a full force team and just the coaches on London or they're legendary. Like I just, I love them. Their energy is everything. It's infectious. And, um, to get back there and get racing, it was so much fun. I didn't know, I didn't have any expectations going into it. And ISL season two went way above any expectations. 
I, you said the coaches are legendary and it just made me think of during the skins races, they, they would have the camera like from the broadcast of it. I'm yeah. watching, you know, they, the cameras would be on them. And if Mel Marshall had someone in there, like she would just be like in there here, like, okay, you got to do this and this, oh and, and, and like, she always had a plan and she's always like, all right, you got it. You're in the zone. Whereas like other coaches would be like, all right, you got it. And, like, you're fine. No, She'd just be Mel like, oh. it's just, her energy is so insane you know I think at, like I was trying to tell uh one of my friends and I was like I'm just gonna read you like our text conversations and it was like you legend can't wait I'm buzzing just like so excited all the time um you know me and her get along really well and she actually used to swim for Ben and now I'm moving to swim with Ben and so that's just another relation that we have but um we we drive so well and you know we just will sit there at the pool like just patiently waiting and just like shaking because we're both <laughs> like so excited and she's like I gauge she gauges her energy off of like how psyched that she is like how well we're all gonna swim and she's like I am buzzing and so uh it, it's so fun to be under a team with her um I seriously I miss her whenever I'm away um but I she's just always just a phone call way gets me excited to swim. And so, uh, she really is such a great coach and I love getting to swim ISL and have her as our head coach. So t- take, take me through those six weeks in terms of your racing. Um, you know, at, at first it seemed like, you know, you kind of had a week in between and then by the end of the season, it was like <laughs> two days on two days off, like rapid fire. Uh, so take, take me through just how you kind of adjusted uh, and molded to your racing to that schedule? Um, so I think kind of the first meet I had, none of us had any idea or expectations. And so my first race I finished and I went a decent time. I was like, Oh, that seems then again, I'm not the best of short course meters, but I was like, that seems like a great, like pretty good swim for right now. And I get out of the pool and I was like, Oh my God, my body with like the lactic acid was like, what did you just do to me? I hadn't felt that in so long. Um, and so that was like, Oh no. And had to get up and swim at 2am again. And then the next day had a relay the 4am just, and I was like, Oh my God. And then I couldn't wait to just get to training. Like I hadn't been that sore from racing. Like I racing would get me tired, but not sore. And the next morning when I woke up after the first day of racing, I was like, Oh my <laughs> God. I was like six weeks. Like, how am I supposed to get up and do this again? Like just like totally mentally panicked. And then we had a quite a bit of a break, I think, after our first match to just get some good training in, which was really nice. So I was training with um, Steve under him for ISL. And so we had pretty lengthy workouts getting in a lot of meters, which I was excited about because I hadn't had that much pool time, let alone have long course training. And so I was just like ready to get back to it. And then the second match, it just, everything like clicked and felt so much better. I just, and then I was just like, this is so exciting. Like everyone is swimming so fast, you know? And I think being around fast swimming and especially when everyone, everyone was at different pages. So there was some that I would talk to and uh, one of the guys was like, oh, I've been out for nine days. And then some of the Brits were like, I've been out for 15 weeks. And then someone was like, I've never was out. And then some was one month. And so, and it didn't matter. And people just wanted to swim fast. And that was so, I think, encouraging from a swimming standpoint, because we just, I think in swimming, I had always been told you do this amount of meters, you do this amount of yards. This is how your training goes and you'll swim well. And I think it's almost like so little and so nitpicky and that's how I'd always kind of had my mindset of swimming. And so with quarantine, it's like, no, I just have to do whatever I can at this point. And then, so I was like, well, I wonder how racing is going to come And At that point, everybody could still swim. People were swimming world records and they hadn't had any preparation that they had planned. And I think that was just so cool to see. And so encouraging that no matter what your preparation was, if you wanted to go up and get, go fast, like you could, And I think that confidence I never would have had if we didn't have ISL this year, which I think encourages a lot for this next year. And 
so many people were like, oh, this is just going to be a slow Olympics because of everything. And if ISL proved anything, it is not going to be a slow Olympics and everyone can still get up and swim fast. And, you know, I, I was happy with my racing. Our whole mindset as a team is we just wanted to progress through the matches. Um, so we wanted to get better through the four and then we wanted semis and finals just to be red hot. And I think almost everyone did. I just in our semifinals, the first day after our first couple of swims, I was just sitting in the warm down and they were like, Oh, how's your swim? I was like, Oh, it was a PB. Like it was awesome. And then PD was like, yeah, mine was a PB. And then someone was like, Oh, me too. And I was like, this is insane. Like, this is so cool. And just, like, that's how it went throughout the whole time. And people were just swimming fast and it was so infectious to just get behind everyone swimming. And, um, I mean, I loved it. I loved the racing. I think it progressed and I think it made a big impact on our sport for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was <laughs> certainly the best news we had for six weeks straight. Right. I mean, yeah. just to have swimming back was such a big deal. Like you said, for the athletes, for the fans, for the media, mm -hmm. um, so uh, just in terms of, of, of the team of London Roar, I know you guys are a tight knit group. Um, was there anyone who surprised you throughout the season, maybe in the pool, outside of the pool, it could be someone who's on the team, a newcomer, um, where, you know, who, who really stuck out to you is like, wow, I didn't expect X from this person. Oh, that's hard. That's really hard. I think, so going into it, obviously London Roar's team changed quite a bit within the weeks leading up to it when we didn't have the Aussies. Um, yeah. So initially this whole season, uh, Kyle Chalmers and I were going to be captains going into this season. And so we had had meeting with Rob, our GM, um, me and him are super close, consider him one of my best friends, try and call as much as we can. The time zone is a little hard sometimes. <laughs> Dude. You know, yeah. so I think um going into this season, like I he still was like every day, like, come on, everyone, just like texting in our group chat, like just so stoked. And so I think what surprised me the most is probably all of the newcomers. Um, we came onto a team where a lot of us were still like stung about the last couple of races in Vegas and getting second last season. And we definitely all still felt that. So all the newcomers came in and they were replacing a very, very strong chunk. You know, I think so many people talked about London Roar as like, oh, this is our B team. Like they're just like are filling in the gaps. Like they just don't have the team that they had. Like, and so many people I think were underestimating us going into this next season because of losing such a big chunk with the Aussies, because I think almost every Aussie had won an event at least in season one that we all were losing. So, you know, um, they did have big shoes to fill in. That's also for us that had already been on the team to step up to and fill in those shoes. But um, I never for a second ever felt from any of them that they felt inadequate to be on the team or they were just replacing someone. They were a member of this team through and through, and they will always be. And I think that was the best atmosphere to be a part of was the fact that they just they had no fear and they were like I want to be on this team and I want to swim for this team and they all had lights out swims there were so many different people that just came into those positions and I think it was really really cool and um and then as well the Aussies we never felt the lack of their presence because they were always behind us always sending us messages and it just we basically created this super team of support, just having this huge team with all these newcomers, the Aussies, the um, people that were already there. And so I think that was such a cool thing to be a part of because so many people, I think, underestimated us. And then we made it into the final and even got third, you know? And so um, it was a really cool thing to be a part of. That, that sounds really cool. Uh, I remember before the season started, we got the Australian news. And it's like, uh, you know, every, I think there were a lot of teams that had Australian members, but I remember thinking like, man, that's a huge hit for London because they had such a strong Australian core. We lost nine, I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like that's and, and like you said, all of them won events last season. It's not like, well, we lost nine and they were like good members. It's like, you know, yeah, they were really strong members 
And so it was, it was like, okay, this will be interesting to see how they can rebound. And then the first match, you guys just come out and guns blaze. And it's like, oh, well, yeah, all right. There, it's like, <laughs> game on. Like, this will game shut on. people up for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, it was cool to see you guys bounce back from such a hard hit like that, for mm-hmm. sure. Um, did, was there a personal highlight for you throughout the season? Um, I think my biggest takeaway for me as a swimmer is kind of how much it strengthened me mentally than anything. Um, you know, when I was going into ISL, I was really happy about the physical benefits that I was going to have way more pool time, have a gym, things like that, um, for my training, but going into it. Okay. So basically after my first 4am, I went up to Mel and I was like, I am not doing that again. Like you guys need to find (laughs) to fill in this gap. Like I'm not doing this. I can't like, that was so embarrassing. Just like as much negative energy as you can. I was like, Mel, you need to walk away from the team because I'm just going to let it all out on you. And she was like, okay, we'll chat, we'll chat. And um, basically she was like, I mean, really? And I was like, I know I'm being so dramatic, but like, that was horrible. And just like going on and on. And then as the meet went by, I just felt better and better. And I, I mean, I've never really shied away with how I've struggled with a lot of mental health through swimming, um, from basically from 2017 on, I've struggled a lot with the four I am. Um, and so it, it's not, I'm not going to say it's the hardest event, but for me mentally, it's really, really challenging. And so going into it and just every day, every time I swam it, I wanted to take something away from it positively and um, especially mentally. And that's kind of where it came from the first match to the last match. It just how I felt about swimming and how I felt about that event. I can't even explain how much, ISL strengthened my mental capacity to understand swimming and just be excited about swimming and actually be in a good place with it. Because I think quarantine, I definitely lost my head for quite a bit. Um, I didn't really know what I was swimming for. I didn't know why I was swimming. I didn't know exactly if I wanted to, I think I wasn't excited about it. And I think it was, yeah, like I want to swim this and this, and I want to have a career in this, like, this is what I want, but it wasn't excitement of it. It was just like, that's kind of how hopefully everything will play out. And I think ISL just made me so excited to race and actually fall in love with racing again. And I I honestly didn't really enjoy racing. I don't think I enjoyed racing for a long time. And I think it's hard to understand that when it's something that you have to do, obviously for your career and you just kind of go through the motions, hopefully get the swim, hopefully you get the time that you need, but to actually enjoy it and enjoy it in the moment too. I just, I was swimming races and just like content to get through the race and get that time. But I, I just like get excited about all the different aspects of racing. And so my biggest then like <laughs> my biggest takeaway is that um like I think I really did fall back in love with racing and just get excited about swimming and I'm I can't believe it happened in six weeks just like that but looking at it I just feel in such a good place going into this year which I definitely wouldn't have said in March <laughs> hey, dude <laughs> I don't know yeah. if anyone would have said that in March yeah. that that makes total sense I hear where you're coming from. And that's so good to hear mm-hmm. that, the, that the ISL was able to do that for you. Not again, not only physically, but mentally, emotionally. Um, so, so just to wrap things up, I mean, that was, a, that was a great ending spot. So <laughs> once, once you get out in six days, <laughs> uh, what are you, what are you looking forward to the most? Do you have an idea of what your training is going to look like in the next couple of weeks? Um, yeah, so I think, well, thankfully our pool is open Um, the Toronto pools aren't necessarily open, but being in the center, um, we have our weight room, we have our pool. And so I'll get back to nine, 10 practices a week, get back to three times a week, um, lifting. Um, I don't know if we'll have any racing on the schedule anytime soon, but 
Um, I just can't wait to just get back to training, get to swim long course. I haven't swam like long course fully in a long time uh, to be able to swim that just because of being in college and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just can't wait to get out, walk my dog, go to the stores, actually live in a city, have that kind of time. Uh, my dog also can't wait as you can tell. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, um, I'm excited to get back to training. I can't believe it really is. Yeah. It's like four or five months, um, that will until trials, but it's really just around the corner, which is crazy. And so just can't wait to buckle down, get racing, be with the girls, get into this program, train under Ben and Ryan. Um, I'm honestly just excited to get out of the house, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you know who you'll be training with or, or, or rather who, what training partners you will have on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'll be able to swim with Kyla uh, Sanchez. I'll be swimming with Penny Alexiak, Taylor Ruck. Um, as of right now, Kylie Moss. Um, some of the guys, Mac Dara, Finley Knox, um, there's a younger, I am girl that is quite, um, she definitely is going to give me a run for my money. Cause she can just do aerobic meters, like a chance champ summer. Um, so yeah, I'll get to be with them. Um, just have a good squad. You know, I think as much as I loved being at a and our pro situation wasn't the best. And, um, just to be with like such a big team will be really exciting to have, more than just one or two people to swim with. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Sydney, thank you again so much for taking the time out of your quarantine to sit down and talk <laughs> with me. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. And we'll have to have you back on uh, sometime in the future. Yeah. Hopefully I'll have some updates on my life and what training's like and <laughs> we'll be new. Maybe there'll be another update about trials, you know, you never know. <laughs> <Dude>. five months. <laughs> <laughs>